Okay. But if you go with me quickly to Hebrews. Yeah, Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews 12. There's a scripture or two I want to give to you. And uh, sorry, maybe I must start with Hebrews 6. Uh, just one verse there. Four verses before. Hebrews 6. How does that sound? <laughs> Verse 11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. Ish, that's rough. The writer saying that to, the, to these guys in this church. And I, I say so many times in the church of Christ in the nations, there's things that God would love to share with us, that God wants to share with us. But I must be in a place to try to understand. That my attitude must be, God, I, I, I want to really give myself with a teachable spirit, with an openness to understand what are you saying to me. It's not just I need to be fed, and if I don't get it, I throw a tantrum, you know, like baby. And if it doesn't come clearly immediately, then that's it. But many times God don't want you to understand immediately. Because you can just get it and go. But it's not a drive-through. <laughs> it's not a drive-through with God. He wants you to stay. It's not a drive through McDonald's. It's a, for you to have a relationship with McDonald's. If I can say like that. Are you with me? It's a total different story with God. But we like because we are in a, in many times in a race. We are in a place where, thank you God, and there I go. I come, I take, and I go. But try to understand has the whole thing of uh, ask and it will be given, seek, and you will find knock and it will be opened. But as you all know, we've said it a few times, it's in the, in the context of ask and keep on asking. Not ask and then start to nag. Not keep on asking because you are now nagging for it. We call that tantrum. Nobody went through something like that when you were small, hey? No. Also, no kids that you have that ever went through that. Ah, but I'm just trying to paint a picture for you. Okay, ask and keep on asking. That keep on asking is not nagging, but that keep, that, uh, keep on asking has to do with stay dependent, stay with an expectation, stay in faith in what you've asked for. Hello. I've asked God. And my focus now is on him. And it's not like if I don't get immediate answer, I'm asking somebody else. I'm asking my reasoning. I'm asking my thinking. I'm asking this, that, 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 that. I will stay with God, even if I don't find the answer immediately. Because him in his jealous love is keeping silent about that because he's trying to draw me closer. He's there. He wants to draw me closer. He wants me. He wants me. He wants me. Who remember that example of the, of the cell phone that I did 29 times already? Who can remember that? One person. Sorry, you cannot get the cell phone, Emil, but uh, <laughs> who quickly wants to come here? Uh, just come up upstairs. Uh, he has done drama, so yeah. So he's asking me for a cell phone. He's praying and he's asking for a cell phone. And he really, you stretch out. Yeah. And he's, and he's asking. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Just keep like that. And, uh, and he's keeping on asking. And he's asking. And you know, God has a cell phone for him. But God is not interested in giving him the cell phone. He's interested in him. Father is interested in his son. Hello? So what he's going to do, 
You're going to feel it so close. You just hold your hand. You're trusting still. And you want to have it. And, you know, to try to get it. And you want to, and, and, and the devil is taking it away from you. And you're, and you're standing against the devil because it's so close what God wants to give you. But he's not the devil. He's God. Come. Come. So he does that. And then he starts to walk with his son. And we're going to do that. And that, and he, oh, and God is speaking to him about this and relationship and that, and about dealing with issues and about praying for other people and this and that. And then somewhere along the way, and so by the way, my son, here's a cell phone for you. Are you with me? So that ask, not really, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you are with me. There's so many times, my brother, my sister, try to understand. That trying is a trial many times. That trying is a trial. But the writer of this book is telling you, the problem is you guys have stopped trying to understand. You stopped trying. Because, and so easily we can get in this mindset, especially in the day of today, in this modern time, that everything is quick. Come on, man. You're going to sell the product. Uh, the quicker it is, the, the, the more chance you have that you will have the best product on the market. May God help you. May God help me. The technology, food, cars, transport, whatever um, way. The quicker it is, the quicker it is, the more professional it is, the more you need it, you want it. That's the way it goes. But with God, certain things are going to slow down <laughs> in a time when everything is accelerating. And the slowing down is me drawn into the place with God, drawn into the place with the Word, where I will make sure I have this time with Him. I will arrest my soul to be, to be silent before the Lord. Tell your flesh to shut up. And in your spirit, you become silent before the Lord. Tell your flesh, flesh, shut up. Don't say it at home <laughs> like that in your family. The pastor says so. <laughs> but in your spirit, with your soul is to be silent before him because of your respect and your worship unto your Lord. Amen. We have so much. God, your Father. God, your Father, my brother and my sister is saying to you, there's so much I have to say to you. But if you no longer try to understand, that's the challenge. That's part of verse 11. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over, all over again. How many times have we heard certain things in our lives where we ought to be teachers? That doesn't mean we ought to be very clever. It means that God, according to the man that God has given you, what you hear today, you're supposed to take it out there. How many sermons have you heard in your life? Maybe you're a Christian that you went to seven Sundays, maybe. Or maybe a little bit more than seven. And what God actually expects of you is what you receive freely, you receive freely give, the word says. And when there's a flow, when there's a flow, it will be fresh. But if you keep on receiving but you never give, there cannot be a freshness. And I pray for freshness in my life, but there's a blockage. Because I have learned in the past, not anymore in the future, but in the past, that I can just receive, but actually it's here, and then it goes there. But if, it's, if it stays here, it's not going to work. It's going to be dumped in religion. I can dump it in religion, or I can make it part of my lifestyle. You walk out here, and you've dumped a lot of things in your religion that you have. You have a religion, a Christian religion. Many guys in going to church, they have a Christian religion, and they dump it, what they hear, into the, their religion. Or oh, I allow it to bring light 
I allow a freshness. I allow it to sustain me and to take me and to draw me into a next level with my God. But that's the danger of interacting with the Word of God. It can bring you in a place where only religion can bring you. It was only religion that was so getting these guys to be so blinded, to be so deceived that they think we are make, doing God a favor by killing this man, the Son of God. It wasn't the prostitute that thought that. It wasn't the sinner out there that had an agenda to kill Christ. Not one of them. Only, only the religious guys. So the more, if you walk out here, did you take something in your heart that want to destroy a relationship with God? Or did you take it and let it support and be a foundation for what you're going to do tomorrow? God will help you. Amen. Okay, let's go quickly to the next one. Um, you need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted, not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Righteousness is your standing in Christ, your stature. You are not acquainted. You're not acquainted. You don't know if every time I just need milk in my situation... If only time, I, have, I, I know one, uh, one or two verses in the Bible. It's not about just memory capacity. But if I only know only this and that, and I remember only this and that, and uh, I have time for the Word, but I'm, when I have time, and God understands my heart. That's arrogance. That's just plain pathetic arrogance. May God set us free. I'm talking about the church globally. May God set us all free. In Jesus' name. But we are coming into the phase when we need to grow up. Because God is coming back for a mature church in Christ. For those who came into the place of what? That are a, a church that's acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Where you need to be acquainted. You need to know. You need to know the teaching about righteousness. The word, what is the word saying? What is the word saying about my stature in Christ? Because you will have to understand your stature in Christ when heaven and earth is shaken. When it's wars and rumors of wars. When it's earthquakes, when it's famines, when it's pestilence. All those stuffs. You know in the past they could say it's the end times because it was there. But if you look back, the problem is the frequency of everything. It's just suddenly going like this. You understand what I'm saying? Now it's called like, it's signs of the birth Birth, I never get that right. Bangs. Birth bangs. Birth bangs. Now you think about birth bangs. It's not that there is a bang, but the intensity of all the bangs that is closer to one another. Is that okay, woman? Just tell me yes or no. Yeah. There's a bang, and then there's a sudden another bang, and suddenly the bangs are like one minute from one another, and then you know, whoa, 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 it's time to pack your bags. Are you with me? And we are in a time where the frequency of such a lot of things is just more and more and more and more intense. And that's where we will find the foolish version or the wise version. Come into that place, my brother. Come into that place that you will not be an infant that is always dependent on somebody else. But that you will grow up in your stature because you are acquainted, you are acquainted with the foundation, with the truth about righteousness. The teaching is about the truth. The truth of righteousness. You have a stature in Christ. I know what I have in the name of Jesus. I will know in my situation where I will tell my situation in the name of Jesus to change. But I also know that I'm in a situation where God does not want to change my situation. He wants me to make a stand, to, make an, 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 to speak in His name in the midst of my situation because my situation is His opportunity to speak in His name so that people can see. Even though when you go through things like that and that and that and that. In Christ you can be stable. In Christ you have a future. And now y'all misusing his name. Using his name in vain. Praying that all the circumstances will, will change. 
and you teach yourself how to have a prayer without the Holy Spirit. As you are praying for your needs, you've learned how to pray for the needs because you are dependent, you want to be dependent on God. But I can teach myself how to have a prayer life without the Spirit of God. You can train yourself very effectively. Those guys, they prayed. Those Pharisees, those Sadducees, they prayed, man. They're in the corner, they're in front of the people here, they, they prayed. But the more they prayed, the more they deceived, be were deceived, to make sure that the reality of the living word must be slaughtered. May it not be that you train yourself in prayer and with the word, that you must, that thing must slaughter all the reality of what you have in Christ. No, it cannot be. It cannot be. It's not God's plan for you. Amen. Acquainted with the teaching of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature. If you're not acquainted with the teaching of righteousness, if you're not acquainted, you underst don't understand who you are in Christ, with Christ, in His name, through His blood, temple of the Spirit, Spirit through you, ambassador with Christ, hello, working with Him. If you don't understand that, if you don't come into that place of, mat of maturity, always, need, always will be this very, very vulnerable infant. Whatever wave of circumstance come against you, you are just so intensely vulnerable. And I'm not talking about vulnerable means uh, uh, open to the, unto the Lord. I'm not talking about the attitude of vulnerability. I'm talking about the enemy can do whatever he wants to do with you. You are no threat. There's no statue in you. No. We're not going back to that place. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use, everybody say constant use, have trained. Everybody say trained. Trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. There's a good from evil that the snake will reveal to you at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you are not trained, and I want to leave you with that, if you are not trained to become mature, either through the Word of God, where you are acquainted, you know, you ca you've come to know righteousness, your statue in Christ, you've come to know the Word, and through that, and you put into practice constant use, constant use, constant use, and you know the flesh manifests and says, okay, this is getting boring. Constant use. Constant using this facet of prayer. Constant using faith. Constant using prayer. Constant using the word, declaring the word. Constant getting into meditating the word. Assimilating it. Eating it. Making part of your life. Constant use. And there's one temptation. Let hell come against you to understand how boring it is to meditate on the word. Let hell come against them so that they will get frustrated, irritated. You know, they don't get sleepy during the, the rugby game. Who? How many people do you know were tempted by the devil to get sleepy during the rugby game? Or during that horror movie or whatever. I'm not watching horror movies, whoever. But only in the church, only when you need to read the word, you know? Then it's impossible. You try to read Isaiah. I, I once went uh, for a week uh, uh, that I had to go for a week with God in some place. And I said, God, uh, what verses you want me to look at? And God said to me, read Isaiah. <laughs> I remember I said, Isaiah. And I realized with that silence, he means Isaiah. <laughs> so that day I had to read Isaiah 1 to 66. And you know, I was so shocked at the flesh rising up in me. Of this is now really getting boring, you know. This is now really, yes, yes, yes. And you know, when you see context, okay, he's talking about this. And you do a summary in your mind. Ah, 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 go. you didn't read it. You were just... 
summarizing. Why do we call it scan? We can scan through the Bible. Scanning through, you know? <sighs> You've heard that verse. And I mean, we can... We, let somebody come up here and they want to read a testimony. But they're taking a scripture. That's one of those things that I always promise also that I'm going to do and I never do it because I'm too scared that you will really get bored and not, you know. And where that person will start to read that one, the son of that, and 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 carrying on. And once God gave me that and I had to read through it also. And at the end of the day, I said, well, God, what are you saying to me? And God opened it up for me. The gener he has a generational God. And how I need to understand it in a different way. And if I don't understand honor, but if I understand honor, the prayers, the legacy, that whole concept, that whole concept of legacy, that is not a million rand that's left to you. But for the past hundred generations... Every prayer, every prayer prayed by your, I don't know what you call that, that lady, your grandmother's, grand, grandmother's, whatever, 100 generations back. But for the generations, that what is legacy coming down is prayers, faith not being answered yet. But it's part of the legacy that you receive when you honor. You receive whatever God has promised through the generations there from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whatever He has promised you in your generations, what they fought for in prayer, what they fought for in prayer, what David had the fight and Solomon just received. David had the fight, the son just received. There's grandmothers in your generations, our fathers also. They've prayed things. They fasted for things. They stood for things. They prayed for a certain revival in their generations. And it didn't happen. But will you have the guts to honor in such a way that you can have that legacy, that inheritance? And all of that got opened up when I was willing to go through the frustration to think I did not hear from God. When I got to this verse and he just said, this one, the son of that, 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 the son of that. Can I go on for another three minutes? Okay, Lord, thank you, God, for the word. I receive it in my heart. But when I ask God, God, what are you saying? Keep there with God. What did we say? But you no longer try to understand. Verse 11. And that's why, because you don't try to understand. I call you infants. I call you, we must just bring the mug. Open. Ba, 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 ba. Ah. But you're supposed to be teachers. That means when you open your mouth, things change in them, things change in the people at the workplace, things change in people that you speak to, because when you open your mouth, it's, what is teaching? Teaching is truth. When you open your mouth, what you say, set people free to live their dream. Set people free to love God more. Set people free to have the courage to deal with the rubbish in their lives. When you open your mouth, they can take courage. They are sometimes challenged with the truth, and people will rise up against you, and you will not know why. Because for some, you are the stench of death, and for some, the aroma of Christ. The same word, same word, same word. You don't want to deal with it. You'll just hear from me the stench of you. You know what is a stench? It's more, much worse than stinking. It's something that has authority in their thinking. <laughs> that you call a stench. A stench of death. Even, even the lady said, Mary and Martha, they said, Jesus, please don't, no, 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 no. You cannot, we cannot open there. Because the stench of death is already there with Lazarus. He's dead longer than three days. Amazing. 
looking in the resurrection before the stains of death could come in. <laughs> Jesus just walked out. Jesus just walked out because he overcame death. And all what is left is death that will work for you. That's the only death that is applicable to you. Remember that. I'm jumping. I know. But remember that today. If you walk from here and you think of a resurrection Sunday, that we rejoice about what Christ has done, but how he was raised from the dead. Remember one thing about death. It has no sting to destroy you. No sting. Let's say, no sting to destroy. But death is your prophet. Death is your prophet. Death is your prophet. Life is Christ. Death is gain. Let everybody say, life is Christ. Death is gain. But only when life is Christ, then death is gain. But if my life is not Christ, there will be a death working in me, but it will be a destructive force from flesh and fear and anxiety, temptation and reasoning and religion and performance and all those rubbish. So death, you have authority in me to destroy me if life is not Christ. But if my definition of life is Christ, then definition of death is profit. But if the definition of life in you is not that life equals Christ, then death does not equal a similar word, gain. And you can fight death. You can fight the destructive force in you. He, he, you're not going to work. Embrace Christ as the life because he overcame the destruction of death. He overcame the sting of death. So death and destruction has no authority in you when you are embracing his authority as your life. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. He has overcome. He has overcome. He has overcome that already. No destructive force can work in you if you embraced him, the one that conquered the destruction. Where am I now? I don't know. Let's go back to my wife. Says, that means she's praying. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Let's just get the picture. You would drive away now for 15 minutes. Then you will go take out things to start to make. And you get the picture. Another hour, you're making food and lay the table and tell your children to do it. And they immediately say, yes, because I love you, Daddy, I will do it. And, and then you will sit and you will eat. So that's an hour and a half. Now that hour and a half is gone. You don't have to do it anymore. Now we replace it by preaching. So that in an hour and a half, we will eat. Is that okay? No answer. I cease. <laughs> Yo, that's bad. So forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they do. <laughs> Yo, everybody say constant use. Train yourself. If you're not constantly going to use the word, you will not distinguish between good and evil under the guidance of the Spirit. You, you better be, you better be distinguishing between good and evil because there's a, there's a person. He will come as the angel of the light, as a wolf in sheep clothes. You know, come like an angel. <sighs> but if you cannot distinguish through the Spirit that that is good, Oh, that, that person, there's, there's evil in that guy. There's evil in that guy. Even though he comes across more holy than the other thousand people. There's evil. You don't know it. You will not do, know it. Why? You're not acquainted with righteousness. You're not in constantly using the solid food of the word. And you're not training yourself through constant using. Not through, not through constant reading the word even. Not through constant sitting with others. But constantly applying the word. Constantly applying. Then in that day you will not be destroyed, my brother. Why did God allow that? I don't know why this happened. I don't know why that happened. I don't know why that happened. 
Maybe it just happened because I wasn't acquainted with righteousness. What God allowed, he gave me the capacity to constantly use the word when I'm allowing myself to be trained by the, by the word. And if I'm allowing myself to be trained by the word and I use the word, what you've heard today, how are you going to use it this afternoon? How are you going to use it this week? Because if you're open to the Holy Spirit, you would write down, even while we are busy. I'm not saying if you don't write down, you, never, you don't allow the guidance of the Spirit. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, if you're not asking Holy Spirit, even when you hear the word, how must I use it? How must I use it? Because unfortunately, the Scripture, that's solely sarcasm, uh, unfortunately, the Scripture says, constantly, constantly using it. Constantly using it. Constantly, constantly using. That's amazing how a child can hear a swear word only three times. And then he just naturally knows how to constantly use it. Amazing. Is it not supposed to be a hundred times more with God? Understanding if we can hear the word and then get into such a lifestyle that I, I just start to constantly use it. But so that's why through preaching and through the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's agenda to explain the word of Christ and to remind you, remind you, remind you. Because in, only in the reminding, in the reminding, in the reminding, in the reminding, you will come into a place of habitually using, applying the word in the right way. But you have a battle that you need to win. And that is when you hear the word and that thing come upon you. You just, you just know it's, it's, it's a demon. You know, when you hear the word and suddenly you are so... Uh, what's Falk in English? I'm going to say it word. Direct translation is a what? Get sleepy, you know? When you hear the word, just suddenly you become so sleepy. When that sleepiness, remember, just he said, just know it's a demon saying shh. So when the demon says shh, you just tell him to go. In Jesus' name, it's not the peace of God coming over you. He's the devil telling you to shh, get sleepy, so that you cannot, uh, so that you cannot try to understand, but that you will stay pathetically immature because. It's awesome. You know, new, all the new babies. You know? I wonder what the babies could say one day. We were also babies. Okay. But when the baby, we all, oh, yeah. The baby didn't say, oh, uh, uh, oh. And you are uh, uh, back, you know? But why we say to the baby, oh, uh. <laughs> why did I say this now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's okay with a baby to do that. But if you are 20 years old and you lay like a baby, and there's the poo poo, and there's the this, then it's not, okay, who will help us quickly? Or who will do it? Dad, yes. Change the nappy. But it's a shame when somebody must do it when you are 20 years old. It's a scandal. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hello? So all I'm saying, my brother, my sister, please, I need to be acquainted and I need to, what I hear, there must be a constant using, a constant applying. That's why with Dr. Jonathan, sometimes, especially in the beginning, he would, when he would, we sit there with more than 12 hours of teaching every day for two weeks and then three, four hours worship in the evening. And it was just, whoo! Now he's, he's half of it in that sense. And I just said, God, this is too much. And the Holy Spirit said, hear and listen to me. And there were so many of, like, you have a whole diary, and the whole diary is full of notes in that two weeks. But 
in a different way to write down what is God saying, what must I do? I must look at this again. I must take time with this. This is applicable for that person. This I'm, we might need to change in our strategy. This we need to change. This we just repent. Repent. Just right there, repent. And that is practically when you finish with that session, when you finish with that week conference, like the guys here at the retreat, you're supposed to walk away here now after these four days and you have 20 things that you just know that you need to go and do. You're not going to go back to all the teaching. That's why you are in the teaching. That's why you are in the conference. So that in the conference you hear and there you get practical strategy from Holy Spirit. How must you apply? How must you do? What must you do? And you walk out here with strategy. When you were soaked in the truth Soaked in his presence, soaked in his wisdom, soaked into a, a prophetic anointing where you can just be in his presence and be sensitive to his spirit and hear what he has to say to you. So when you come out of such a place, you're supposed to come out with strategy, with action plans. Hello? Even you other guys, I challenge you, get the, get the teaching on the, our Father's Home channel on YouTube. Work through it. Work through it. But don't sit there to hear teaching. That's rubbish. That's, I, I hear what he's saying, but I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to apply it. That's when I come under judgment. Constant use. For those who, con but through constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish, to distinguish. I trained myself not to know a lot. You are not being trained to know a lot. You are not being trained so that you know a lot of the Bible. You are trained so that you can distinguish between good and evil. And what the last one, uh, Matthew 28 says, Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them to know a lot. No. Teach them to obey. To obey. Oh, trained through constant use, constant use, constant use, constant use. So teaching to obey, trained to obey. But in the training, if I'm trained, then I will understand what is good, what is evil. Because it's, we're supposed to be fed up with so many things that we try to do, but at the end of the week, at the end of the week, we don't see a 30, 60, 100 fold money, uh, multiplication because it wasn't with incorruptible seed. It was a good idea. It was a good thought. And then we gave our energy with that seed to make that a tree or a harvest. And at the end of the year, we have no harvest. And we think, where did the devil steal the harvest? No. It was plain stupidity because we sat with a seed that was not what God gave. It looked very innocent. It looked beautiful. It looked good. It didn't look, this seed looks like from the devil. No. Just make sure you have the right seed in your, your hand. Then the devil cannot deceive you with all the other rubbish seeds. Seed through reasoning. Seed through your, your way of being in control. Seed of one, two. This is how it works. And according to my personality, it works step number one to ten. Because that's my personality. Ali Inki is an array. Who said it in English? Check it, check it. All the ducks in a row. Yeah. All the ducks in a row. That's my personality. God knows that in his awesome love. If you allow God, really, he's going to make sure those ducks are going to run around. So that you will, that your personality and your way of doing is not in control. But that God can be in control. But that will happen if you start to apply. If you dare to start to react to the word. Not in hearing, but in doing, in constant use. Everybody say constant use. Constant. Now say it as if you are bored. Constant use. Constant. Ah, okay. Because you've really heard it now. Okay, but let it be fresh in you. Constant use. I've trained themselves to receive me good from evil. But understand, if you're not going to take this through the Spirit, you will know. There's guys out there. And sometimes they know so much better good from evil. But it's under the guidance of the snake, under the guidance of that what is not from God.
Because as long as the enemy can keep the church to react stupid, if that's the right word, about what is good and what is evil, what is good, what is bad, that's the only solution. Then the world must tell us what is good and what is evil. But under the guidance of that, the wisdom of the snake. So you will find good and evil out there and that the people will know the difference. That will know the difference. Yeah, you will find governments under demonic influence, but they have sometimes the most fantastic type of laws about good against evil. Good against evil. May we not stand ashamed, but may we grow up into maturity and that we can say through the Spirit of God and through being trained through constant use of the Word that they can see according to heaven what is good and what is evil. God, come and guide us through your Spirit. We trust you for that, Lord. We honor you for that, Father. And we know you have only, only, only the best for us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will. You will guide us. We need your help. We need your help. God, and I pray that we will see. We will see your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. But where we walk in a relationship with you, where God, you said this is eternal life, that we may know you and the one that you've sent, your son, Jesus Christ. I pray for a lifestyle in every man and woman in this place that will have eternal, eternal value by coming to know you as Father and your son, Jesus Christ, their King, Master, role model in every facet, Lord. Come and do that in our lives. Holy Spirit, if it's not through you, we, it's, it's all in vain. It's all rubbish, Lord. It's all religion. If it's not through you, Spirit of God, we need you. We ask that you come and do that in our lives, please, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen.